Hello, and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous, and this is part 26 in a 10-part video series in which we're exploring how to automate using vRealize Orchestrator. And this video is one of actually six in a row where we're talking about configuration elements. Like the previous video, in this video, we're still not using configuration elements. Instead, we're taking a look at a few different example workflows to show why configuration elements are useful. So let's jump in. Now, a quick reminder here, in our uh, workflows that we're showing you here, we're assuming that we're working in a customer environment that has both a test dev environment and a production environment. And you'll notice here that there are different IP addresses for each of those environments. And as a consequence, when we run this workflow in one environment or the other, we need to make certain that the workflow is working with the correct IP addresses. So let's take a look at the next workflow. This workflow is called better, but still painful. Because once again, this workflow is not using configuration elements. So if we take a look at the workflow, you'll notice this time that this workflow will branch off into one or two, two it branches in two directions, either one way or the other. Now, uh, notice that the branch on the top is going to contain schema elements that do things um, for our, with our production environment. The schema elements down on the bottom are for when our workflow is going to be running in the, the test dev environment. Now, obviously, to make something like this work, specifically to make that decision element work, we're going to need to have, let me find my cursor here, we're going to need to have some sort of input parameter. Uh, in this case, I declared a, a Boolean input parameter called run in production environment. So yes, no, do you want it in there? Depending upon what the user answers for that particular um, Boolean input parameter, we're going to branch either into the production schema elements or the test dev schema elements. Now, if we look at any of these schema elements, uh, just picking one here, so this is the test dev schema element for logging information about our machines that we're communicating with. So it logs information about our web server and notice this IP address is in the 192.168 range, which according to our diagram that we saw a few moments ago means that that's an IP address that's appropriate if this workflow is running in the test dev environment, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So all these schema elements that you see here and all the IP addresses that you see in our little uh, yellow noted um, area are all using IP addresses in the product, excuse me, in the test dev network. So let you see all of them. Sure enough, they all work that way. Now, without even clicking on the schema elements up above, if you remember the IP addresses of our production environment, you shouldn't be surprised at all when you discovered that this schema element for our, when we're running in production, the schema element has IP addresses that are in the production environment's network range, 172.16. blah, 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 blah. Now, this workflow is going to, in some ways, be easier than the previous workflow in the previous video. In the previous video, every time we wanted to run this that workflow in a different environment, for instance, promoting from test dev to, to production, that previous workflow required that we go back in and potentially edit all the schema elements to change the IP addresses that they mentioned. Here in this workflow, I'm not going to have to edit all the different schema elements, but notice I'm having to duplicate all the schema elements. So yeah, I don't have to go looking for uh, all the IP addresses because they're all in here in the appropriate place. But this approach, while it makes it easier to promote the workflow from one environment to the other, it is hard to write the workflow using this technique. So we're going to have to find uh, some better way of doing it. But just before we do, before we go to that next video, again, just to show you how this workflow works, I'll run it. If I say, no, I don't want to run the workflow in the production environment, it should go down this red arrow. So we'll go ahead and run this workflow and watch closely. So the workflow runs should run pretty quickly. In fact, it ran so quickly, I couldn't even see it highlighting these schema elements, but I know it went down that path because this schema element at the end is green. On the other hand, if I run that workflow again, but this time choose run the workflow yes in production, the workflow will do exactly what you think it's gonna do. It's gonna run on that upper branch because we're in the production environment. Again, this works great. When you're promoting the workflow, from one environment to the other, but developing a workflow this way is 
it's not just slow, it's error prone. I, I myself would make mistakes if I were using this approach. So we're gonna take a look in the next video at one more not so good example workflow to just really drive home what the issues are when you're not using configuration elements. So I'll see you in the next video.